welcome to our webinar on AI product development. Uh, my name is Marzia Nabi, and I'm a senior product manager at Amazon. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the AI product management, but before that, let me start with a brief intro about myself. Um, I'm a rocket scientist by training. I did my PhD in aeronautics and astronautics with focus on optimization and autonomous systems and a master's in pure mathematics from University of Washington. Right after graduation, I joined Palo Alto Research Center known as Xerox Park as a research scientist in AI. Um, I was very interested on the business uh, aspect of the technologies that we were developing in the labs uh, and how we can bring those technologies into reality, putting it into a context of a product. Uh, so I did uh, a business training at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Um, and um, right after that, uh, I joined um, I joined the business unit uh, at Park, basically, and I was in charge of commercializing um, the advanced technologies that we have. Um, after that, I decided to move from R&D to more in the context of um, uh, companies uh, creating products, and I joined as a senior product manager um, I joined a startup, a unicorn a startup, basically in the valley. It's called Automation Anywhere, and I was in charge of uh, uh, bringing um, AI and more specifically natural language processing, um, computer vision, and a speech uh, um, to create a product that basically can automate enterprise uh, processes. Um, after that, I joined. Um, uh, uh, eBay as a uh, lead product manager, uh, and I was in charge of bringing AI and using AI to convert unstructured data provided by our sellers and buyers um, to uh, and convert them into a structured format. And after eBay, I joined Amazon um, as a senior product manager in the supply chain optimization technologies. Um, uh, uh, disclaimers, so the content that I'm presenting here are just based on my personal experiences and are not reflecting the companies I worked for before or, or I'm working right now. And the other aspect is that the, the presentation is going to be forward thinking and some of the concepts and the way that I have been thinking about this uh, AI product development may change. Um, and uh, we'd love to get more feedback about how you are also thinking about this concept of AI product manager. Um, I believe AI product management is a very important topic and, um, and there is a lot to cover here, uh, but the two specific concepts that I was hoping to cover here is the first aspect of it is that what it means to be a product manager for AI products. Um, there are different uh, perspectives to this, there are different things to consider, but I'm going to talk about three specific pillars here. So about the mindset, the type of skill sets that an AI product manager would need, and um, this concept of integration and collaboration between AI and human, and that I will elaborate more in a um, few minutes. The second topic that I'm going to cover is just talking about um, some opportunities and more about the challenges that it would uh, we would face as an AI product manager. Okay, let me get into that. So how to become and what it means to be an AI product manager. Uh, before I dive into the concept, so um, I want to start with uh, defining what I mean by AI um, and make sure that we are on the same page. So AI is a sub-branch of um, computer science. It started in uh, 1955. It went through a lot of uh, ups and downs. Um, and we are at a stage that a lot more development um, has been happening at AI. So AI itself has different branches. 
some of them more popular, so some of them more um, uh, have gone through more advancements recently, um, uh, and some um, maybe not much. Um, so um, branches like machine learning and different aspects of machine learning, like deep learning, reinforcement learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning that we talk about. Um, the second branch of um, um, AI um, that also has gone through a lot of um, recent development and interesting applications about um, the field is natural language processing. Um, so others like vision, like a speech, the same. And um, so other branches of AI are like expert systems and the planning and robotics um, are all into the category of AI. So when we say AI is very broad and it can include many different um, subfields basically. So uh, become um, a PM in AI. Mm. Yeah, based on my personal experiences, so these are the three pillars that I was hoping to dig deeper today. So the first aspect of it is that uh, what should be the mindset of um, a, a PM when is working on AI products? Uh, so the second aspect of it, the set of skill sets that is needed. And the third aspect of it that I'm going to talk about is human um, AI collaboration, why we need it, why I think it can add a lot of value to the set of products uh, that we are creating. And um, so I just uh, I want to start sort of bringing this and um, as, a, as a way for AI product managers to think about the products that are creating. So and it may not be applied in all scenarios, but I believe it has a lot of value uh, and it is a good thing to think about it when we are working on AI products. So let me get into each one of these pillars and talk a little bit more about the details and how uh, and what I mean by that. So you know, the first aspect is the mindset. So um, AI product development in many sense is very similar to a traditional product development. So what we see in product life cycle, what we see um, as an introduction, growth phase, maturity, the decline, it will be also valid when we talk about an AI based um, product uh, basically. The same goes with uh, product development process. So uh, the way that we think about uh, developing a traditional product, uh, most of those um, set of steps um, and the tasks that needs to happen is the same for AI product development. So when we talk about the process in a product development, so we go through the conceive, we talk, we plan, we develop, we iterate, and this iteration and um, um, it happens all in all these phases. Um, so the launch when we go through the steady state and when we go through the maintain and kill uh, process. Um, so all these tasks would be the same basically when we talk about AI product development. So uh, this is, um, I think it is very important um, uh, uh, aspect, um, even though all of these um, so phases, when we talk about one product, it would be different from the other product. But um, uh, but the framework, the, the set of tasks, all those things that we need to go through, it will be um, uh, more or less the same. So this is how, uh, the first aspect. So we just need to think about AI as another set of tools at our disposal to solve a problem. So, um, so and that we start with the problem, that's a key, uh, key point here. So the second pillar that I wanted to talk about was this key set. So uh, a traditional PM um, needs to know the technology, needs to know the business aspect, and needs to know uh, the design aspect. So uh, uh, um, a PM in AI would also be the same. So we need to know the business aspect, we need to know the design aspect. Uh, and when it comes to technology, I want to argue that uh, 
we need to have uh, a deep knowledge in AI. So we need to be able to interpret and criticize the results and not just understand and explain and communicate uh, them. So uh, what I mean by that, if we think about the depth of knowledge as four level, so the level, the first level being able to recall a concept, the second aspect of it being able to use it to solve a problem, and the third and fourth aspect of it to be more of a strategic thinking and extended thinking, being able to criticize, uh, being able to, to interpret, and that's what I mean by that. So a, a, an AI, a PM in AI needs to have this fourth uh, level of depth of knowledge uh, when it comes to AI. Um, and the reason that I argue that this is very important are the, the following. So the same way that if a CEO cannot read the financial documents, um, cannot understand um, um, the data coming out of the products um, uh, of her company, then uh, she won't be able to make, um, uh, make um, intelligent decisions. Uh, the same goes with a, part, a PM who is working on an AI-based product. So the PM needs to be able to analyze and criticize the solutions, the algorithms, the results that are provided to the PM. Um, and so, uh, and this is so when it, the the data, this uh, volume of information coming so and. A PM who has a depth of knowledge in AI can make a better decisions. So the other aspect um, that uh, a PM in AI needs to have this depth of knowledge in AI is that uh, the PM have to understand and communicate the limitations of the technology. So we often um, come across people who know the AI as a buzzword. They think the AI is a magic and is going to solve all the problem in the universe. So uh, we should be should be able to um, communicate the limitations. First of all, know the limitations exactly, and then come being able to communicate the limitation. So the third aspect of it is AI. Um, and the algorithms that we are developing are based on data. So and data is integrated into um, any AI product development processes that we are going through. Um, and uh, understanding that um, every aspect of the data, the data acquisition, data handling, the privacy and security aspect of the data, uh, and basically being able to put um, a firm and valid um, uh, data strategy in place um, can happen if the, the PM knows well enough and um, has this depth of knowledge in AI. Um, the last part of it is that this depth of knowledge in AI, um, it would build trust with the scientists and developers as well. Um, so that's why I, I think um, um, the difference between a traditional PM who knows to who should know the technology well enough um, uh, and is different from a, a PM in AI should know the AI technologies um, like in a, in, a, in a deep level, basically, in the fourth level of the depth of knowledge and will be able to criticize and interpret uh, and make a decision about the next basis um, of uh, where we should go with the results with this data. So now let's move to this human and AI collaboration uh, and integration. Yes. So um, we cannot expect the AI algorithms um, and we cannot expect using historical data to teach machines to perform with high confidence and high accuracy in all scenarios. Um, so there is this limitation to AI, uh, and that comes because of the volatility in the data that sometimes is hard to model. So because of the unseen events that are happening in the data. So there's these scenarios that the AI algorithms won't be confident and won't be accurate about the, the predictions mm -hmm. that are making. So, uh, so then uh, we need 
some way to adjust for that. And I believe in um, in most cases, not all for sure, um, this integration and collaboration between the human and um, uh, the machines uh, and AI algorithms can provide a better product that will have higher efficiency, better adoption, um, and more confidence basically in the product. Um, so let me give you um, two specific examples of this. Um, and I wanna um, um, encourage um, all of us when we think about AI products, how we can um, um, uh, basically embed this human aspect into the product that we are developing. And the two examples, one is in the context of predictive maintenance. Um, uh, and uh, we come across this um, in, uh, in advanced manufacturing, for example, in um, a context of more physical work, probably. Um, think about this specific example that um, we have trains and we are trying to predict whether some pieces of this train, like let's say doors, they need maintenance. So we want to look at the historical data um, and based on that historical data, predict um, if um, the door is going to fail. So if we make that prediction, then we will do the maintenance ahead of time and it will, we will um, stop the interruption in the, uh, the train um, operation basically. But what happens if we just use the historical data? So we develop this predictive maintenance and based on the results, even though if the algorithms are not high confident, but we will send the crew to the to the train to the um, um, to the main line and they will try um, to see if there is any maintenance needed. What happens is that if the the crew will go there, a couple of times and they see that there was actually no need for any maintenance over time they will lose the confidence in the algorithms um so uh, but if 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 i integrate if we integrate the human into this process and uh, so they can add input to the uh, predictive uh, results that uh, we had from the algorithms then we will prevent this sending crew to the to the train um, while there was no need uh, probably for any maintenance. Um, um, this is one example. Now, the other example uh, is a customer service automation. Um, again, this is in, more in the context of enterprise and um, uh, think about um, 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 uh, an enterprise, like for example, uh, enterprise in educational services, they receive about half a million at least emails per year. So without using AI, so a human um, uh, needs to read the emails, understand the intention of the emails, send it to the right people, and or uh, perform the specific actions that the email was asking for. So we bring AI, we bring natural language processing, and um, NLP will able be able to understand the intentions, will be able to um, extract the right information and uh, take some actions using some other services. Um, but my argument is that what happens uh, if um, the AI algorithm is not confident? So should I send it to the wrong person? So should I perform the wrong action? And depends on the context, some of these um, uh, actions down, downstream could have a bigger sequences. So let's think about the context of banking so, or other scenarios that the consequence could be, um, could be bad. Um, but what if I bring a human into this whole AI um, uh, solution, AI product, and the cases that the algorithms are not confident, it will be sent to human for review. And um, uh, this is now the human can focus on the more complex cases, the workload would be much less, and we will be more confident in the results that are coming out of AI. So, um, 
this integration of the human into the AI products, it will be much more complex than a traditional product uh, or even a traditional AI product. Um, uh, it will be heavy on the design um, because of this presence of the human and the integration that we are talking about. But at the same time, there is a lot of value uh, that can be provided by this collaboration and by the way that we as a product manager from day one, we think about this integration. And one aspect of this integration that can help is um, uh, the human can provide a venue for us to to collect more labeled data. And this labeled data would be um, a very high quality uh, data that we can use it to improve the algorithms. Um, so um, yeah, as I said, I encourage you all to think about this human AI integration. And as I mentioned before, so I believe there is a lot of value, but not always that is the right solution. Yeah. So, um, I stop here um, uh, uh, as so as a as a um, uh, point that we talked about the, uh, how to become AI product managers. There are a lot more uh, to it. Um, I myself transitioned from research from R and D to product, um, uh, but I will stop it here on this, this subject and I move to the next subject. The next one talking about opportunities and challenges. So I don't think I need to talk much about the opportunities, um, uh, the, all these advancements in the technology, advancements in dealing with the data, the computational advancements that happened in the last couple of years, it all made it AI more reasonable to use as a technology um, for solving um, more complex problems. And we see examples all over, um, so both for the consumer solutions as well as in the context of enterprise. Um, I talked about um, customer service automation, so the, uh, the technologies that we see in the driverless cars, the advanced manufacturing, the better health and wellness type solutions that are in the market. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. So um, the, in the context of e-commerce, um, uh, um, in the context of um, sharing economy, so all these things. So we see very interesting uh, uh, examples of AI. So there are opportunities there, but I wanna talk more about challenges. And the challenges, Basically, um, I divided into these four categories and I will uh, talk about each category, um, but I'm sure there are a lot more uh, uh, given the context of the uh, product and the solutions that we are thinking about. So let me start with the challenges as um, in the context of the stakeholders expectation management. And I believe this is a very, very big one. Um, uh, so who are the stakeholders? So the stakeholders, we can divide them into either external ex um, stakeholders and also internal ex stakeholders. And depends on the face of the product, depends on uh, depends on the bigger context that the product is living in, for example, the state of the company and so on. So um, the stakeholders might be different um, and the expectations might be different. But based on my experience, um, so given this buzz um, 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 word aspect of AI and there are some people think that AI is a magic. Um, so uh, this expectation management would be very important. So ex external stakeholders could be uh, enterprise companies if you are working on an enterprise solution. So if consumers, uh, it could be um, analysts um, uh, and, um, and so on. So, um, uh, or it could be business owners, all those, so business owners in the context of an enterprise. Um, and I have seen examples that, um, um, that people want AI solutions, but without any, any um, uh, experience about, so AI is, needs data. So they don't know what is the label data, but 
they have these metrics that they, they need to follow up, like in their business units. So, and they think that AI will uh, solve all of their problems. Um, so um, the same, I'm sure, goes to the context of uh, consumers um, as well. Um, and then the same goes with the internal stakeholders, Inter internal stakeholders like um, sales team. So sometimes they believe, or if we add this, uh, this feature that is AI based suddenly, um, so the sales will go um, 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 skyrocketing. So um, the marketing team the same. So um, uh, the, all these internal stakeholders also need to be um, uh, educated about what is AI, what are the limitations, what it takes to create a product in AI. The second challenge is the data acquisition and governance. So AI basically, um, is integrated into uh, into data. So we need data in order to to develop models um, and to think about the, um, how to uh, obtain the data, how to manage the data, how to um, uh, what what it takes to to take care of them, um, the privacy and um, and um, uh, security of the data, so that the IT requirements. Um, all those aspects needs to be thought through. Uh, some companies may not have those IT infrastructure. Um, so, and the AI product manager needs to think about uh, what it takes and needs to educate um, um, the system and needs to uh, team up at least with others to create that infrastructure. So the, the, the next aspect of um, the challenges are knowing the technology limitations and thinking about the return on the investments and return on the effort that it takes to create the product. So, um, and what can be achieved, what cannot be achieved basically. And um, sometimes some of the solutions may not need AI or may uh, be able to solve those with a simple um, algorithms rather than going all the way to deep learning. But a uh, simple regression sometimes can solve some of these problems. So uh, being able to focus on the problem and see how we can solve that problem rather than uh, uh, being excited by using deep learning to, to create a solution. The, la the last aspect that I'm going to talk about today are the metrics. So um, a metric is on the mind of all of the PMs. Um, but as a product manager in AI, like the um, so new set of metrics come into the picture basically. And um, um, so having a very good sense of what are the different metrics and how why we should um, look um, and define the metrics uh, that is another aspect of the um, AI, um, given that new set of metrics uh, are defined and are at the disposal of a PM in AI. So I'm not going to go through the details given the time, but as I mentioned, all these challenges, we can dig deeper and talk more about each one. So the main takeaways I want you all to get from the call from this webinar. The first aspect, AI is not a hammer. So it's just another set of tools to solve a problem. And we need to think about what problems we are trying to solve. Um, so the other aspect of it as a PM in AI, I encourage you to have to develop uh, that uh, depth of knowledge in AI and understand um, uh, different algorithms, understand um, um, uh, understand what is, so what are the limitations, understand um, uh, what can and cannot be done. And the third point is that AI plus human uh, can help us to create products. Um, that are uh, basically um, uh, have um, higher efficiency and it will have a better adoption basically at the end of the day. And thank you so much for listening to this webinar.